Moore, as the commander of the 30th Naval Construction Regiment. I am Commander Roberto Alvarado, your Master of Ceremonies. The Naval Change of Command is a unique and time-honored tradition whose origins are drawn from the customs of the earliest days of seafaring men. These customs gradually became the basis of British naval regulation developed over two centuries ago and were adopted by the Continental Navy during the Revolutionary War and are still a vital part of today's modern Navy. The boatsman's pipe you will hear was originally used to call the stroke in ancient Rhodes galleys. Piping the side originated in the days of sail when commanding officers were hosted aboard in a net of baskets. The officer of the deck always had several able-bodied seamen or side boys standing by to assist in the handling of the net. As officers increased in rank, they earned more money and became, shall we say, healthier. As a result, the more senior an officer became, the more he weighed, and the more sideboards were required to hoist him on board. The result of that custom is the use of escorts to render honors to the official party today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation, the arrival of colors, and the national anthem. Captain, Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy, arriving. Thirtieth Naval Construction Regiment, arriving. Naval Construction Group 1, arriving. Commander, Task Force 75, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Matthew Riley, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for allowing us to serve our country's Navy combat team and partake in its rich history as in today's change of command. Lord, permit today's ceremony to put our lives on pause as we admire the burden of leadership diligently conducted by Captain Moore. We thank you for his staff, senior enlisted leaders and troops that executed his orders with passion and attention to detail, leading the 30th Naval Construction Regiment to its pinnacle of pride and professionalism. We also thank you for his wife, Amy, and her patriotism and support. We pray that you would bless them with the traditional fair winds and following seas as they journey on to the next chapter of their lives. Next. We hail the leadership of Captain Meyer. Lord, you alone know the years of preparation that has molded him for this moment. We pray that you would allow him to command with clarity of thought, decisive judgment, and profuse appreciation for those who execute his orders. Bless him and Tammy as they adjust to this tour and permit them many precious memories in the years to come. In your holy name, amen. March on the colors.
ladies and gentlemen, BU2 Marie Twy will now sing our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce to you the host of today's ceremony, Captain Chris Kurgan, Commander, Naval Construction Group 1. Good morning. Welcome. <laughs> Colonel Colton, her husband Mike, Former 30th Navy Construction Regiment Commodore Kelly Schmader, Captain Retired Bob Quinn, his wife Judy, Captain Dave Sastic, his wife Nicole, Commodore's family, Commodore Moore's family, his lovely wife Amy, his parents Bob and Marcia, the Wiggins family, Commodore Myers' lovely wife Tammy, fellow captains, commanding officers, past and present, chief staff officers, executive officers, command master chiefs. Retired heroes of the military community, community leaders, family, friends, men and women of NCG-1, 30th NCR, NMCBs 3, 4, 5, and UCT-2, welcome to the 30th Naval Construction Regiment Change of Command. We are very happy to have you with us today. I'd like to thank the NMCB-5 Color Card for, color, for carrying the Color Guard. You all look sharp. And that's just why, for that very inspirational rendition of our national anthem and to all the men and women who put this event on today. Be seeing and thank you. As our master of ceremony noted, today's ceremony is steeped in naval tradition and heavy winds. 
I particularly like the last sentence of the change of command tradition in a program, which notes this simple ceremony, passing authority and responsibility, yet another fine officer reflects the dedication of free citizens serving their nation proudly. I'd like to also add that both of our fine officers today are healthy in all the right ways. Today is also a celebration to mark the accomplishments and proud history of 30th Naval Construction Regiment, which has provided exemplary command and control of our CB units across the Pacific and the globe dating back to World War II. In fact, this past Tuesday at quarters, the regiment was presented with the Navy Unit Commendation Medal for their exemplary command and control of over 4,000 joint Navy, Army, and Air Force Engineer Forces prosecuting missions across southern Afghanistan. Over the past couple of years, the 30th Naval Construction Regiment has provided command and control of joint and combined units in support of the Pacific Fleet major theater engagement initiatives and exercises. In recognition of the value the Navy Exposure Forces provide to our Pacific Theater objectives, Commander Pacific Fleet Admiral Harris recently approved the stand-up of Navy Exposure Forces Command Pacific and Commander Task Force 75. As such, CTF 75 will execute operational command and control of assigned expeditionary forces in the 7th Fleet area of operations, increasing the Navy Expeditionary Force effectiveness by synergizing command and control. CTF 75 will also serve as the core of Navy Expeditionary Force's battle staff in major crisis response and major combat operations in the 7th Fleet. It will be the principal advisor to the 7th Fleet commander for Navy Expeditionary Operations. They will plan and execute Coastal Riverine, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, Mobile Diving and Salvage, and Construction in Nearshore Waters, the Toral Regions, and Inland Areas. All these diverse capabilities contribute to a significant role in executing theater security operations. It's also a major step for Expeditionary Forces across the Pacific. Leading this command requires diverse experience, and Captain Chris Merwin has just that. He's a master EOD technician, an EOD officer, a naval parachutist, a mixed gas diving and salvage officer. He commanded EOD Mobile Unit 12, which deployed to Iraq, and is a battle-tested proven warrior. His extensive resume includes assignments as the Operations and Plans Officer for EOD Group 2, an Action Officer on the Joint Staff Operations Directorate, coordinating defense support of civil authorities and the deputy director for the anti-terrorism and homeland defense and as the joint munitions office branch chief in the U.S. Pacific Command's Directorate of Logistics, Engineering, and Security Cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce Captain Chris Merwin, a plank owner and first commander, Navy Expeditionary Forces Command Pacific and Commander Task Force 75. How about a warm welcome? Alright, it's hard to run it smooth off sometimes. We got high winds and uh, sword malfunction here, but uh, we'll just go ahead and carry on, alright? Commodores Kurgan, Kathleen, Commodore Moore and Amy, Robert and Marcia, Captain Meyer and T Tammy, Colonel Carlton, fellow colonels, captains, COs, command master chiefs, and to the assembled CBs here in Port Wyanemi, to all friends and family of the 30th Naval Construction Regiment, I say half a day. That's the greeting in Guam. Welcome to the change of command. I know most of you don't know me, and you may have no idea why an EOD captain is up here speaking at this change of command. It's a fair question, and we'll get to that. But first, I want you to know how honored I am to be here, and how impressed I am with what I've learned about the 30th Naval Construction Regiment, where you came from, and what you've done. For those that may not know, the proud history of the 30th Naval Construction Regiment goes back to World War II, when the 30th was first established in 1944 on Saipan the island just north of my headquarters on Guam. You supported the invasion of Tinian and then rebuilt the airfield from which the B-29 bomber strikes were launched against the islands of Japan. You later moved to Guam and after the war to over to the Philippines where you managed the construction of the famous U.S. Naval Air Station at Cuby Point. In 1965, you were reactivated at Da Nang, the Republic of Vietnam, where you exercised operational control over the mobile construction battalions deployed to Vietnam 
Then in 1969, you were redeployed to Okinawa. In 73, you went back to your birthplace in the Marianas to Guam, where from there you directed the construction of the naval base at Diego Garcia between 1971 and 1982. In 82, you were reactivated at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. From there, the 30th NCR participated in Operation Restore Hope in Somalia back in 93. And then in January of 2003, the 30th Naval Construction Regiment deployed to Southwest Asia in support of operations in during freedom and Iraqi freedom. During OIF, the regiment supported the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force with non-standard bridging and general engineering support for which you received the Presidential Unit Citation. 2004 and 2005, you supported humanitarian relief efforts after tsunamis devastated parts of South Asia and Africa. Then on the home front, you provided immediate relief to the Gulf Coast following Hurricane Katrina. The 30th Naval Regiment deployed to Iraq to support the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force in 2005 and 2006. And when you were done with all that, they moved you from Hawaii here to Naval Base Ventura County in Port Wainimi. Sounds like the 30th is like a typical Navy family. You've done a lot, you moved a lot, and you should be proud of all of it. So what have you been doing in the last couple of years? Well, let me brag on your Commodore a little bit. Commodore Moore was well prepared to take command of the 30th. As you can read in his bio, he's operated in almost every theater and led at every level. Since he's been in command, Captain Moore has demonstrated extraordinary vision. His efforts have influenced the way ahead for the employment of operational engineer forces throughout the Pacific. On his watch, the 30th Naval Construction Regiment forces have achieved remarkable success in support of contingency and peacetime phase zero operations throughout the Pacific, Southwest Asia, and even in the Western United States. He's executed missions for 13 supported commanders in 17 countries, and he's led joint and combined forces. Throughout all of this, he ensured that his Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force units maintain proper readiness levels to accomplish major combat operations, theater security cooperation, humanitarian assistance, disaster recovery, and all phase zero requirements across the Pacific Command's air of responsibility. One particular highlight is how he revolutionized the Naval Construction Force's involvement in Pacific Partnership 2014 as the first Naval Construction Force Regiment to serve as a mission commander in Indonesia and Timor-Leste. He led the efforts to enhance those partner nations' engineering, disaster preparedness, and medical capabilities, while also serving as the engineer lead for three other phases of the exercise in Cambodia, Vietnam, and the Philippines. On top of all that, he integrated partner nation participation from Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, the embassy teams, the USAID, and multiple other non-governmental organizations that ultimately increased our partner nation's capabilities and improved our relationships, which helps promote regional stability and security. He directed a combined military force of 300 personnel to complete five engineer civic action projects, 25 cooperative health engagements, and 10 community relation projects. I cannot overstate how important the efforts he led and that you all executed are in support of our national strategy and our pivot or our rebalance to the Pacific. For those of us who have lived and operated in the Pacific, I would argue that the Naval Expeditionary Forces don't need to rebalance to the Pacific. We're already here and we have been for years, quietly making a difference by doing what we do with our partner nations, establishing and building on those relationships that provide us with access and that ultimately promote stability in the Asia Pacific region which is arguably the engine of the global economy today. Make no mistake about it, the tactical level things that you did during Pacific Partnership and that you routinely do as part of your construction civic action details and the civic action teams has strategic influence in the region. So in addition to Pacific Partnership 14, Commodore Moore guided the staff to participate in 23 other major exercise and theater security cooperation program engagements with 15 partner nations to include Balakatan, Joint Special Operations Task Force Philippines, Carrot, Cobra Gold, Full Eagle, and Ardent Sentry. He personally shaped and developed the Naval Construction Force in support of the Pacific in order to greatly enhance theater campaign plan objectives and host nation interoperability. During exercise Balakatan 2013, he provided superior command and control as the first ever Navy CB commander of a combined joint civil military operations task force while directing humanitarian civic assistance missions 
for the Marine Forces Pacific Commander. As the strategic motive, his guidance significantly strengthened the relationship between the armed forces of the Philippines and the U.S. military while directing a combined force of 355 personnel from all services to complete seven engineer civic action projects, six cooperative health engagements, and 11 community relations projects that directly resulted in improved perceptions of the United States military for over 11,000 Philippine local nationals. Again, this just goes to show how a small operational force operating in an expeditionary manner has strategic influence and helps promote theater and national objectives. It's powerful stuff, and I applaud you for the great work that you've done. With the CB units deployed to CENTCOM, Commodore Moore managed the first ever Army Engineer Battalions in the Pacific AOR under the Navy Operational Control. This challenging PACOM initiative to increase engineer forward presence was laden with complications, but Commodore Moore's focus on interoperability with the Joint Force ultimately led to successful Army deployments in support of PAC fleet missions. Aside from managing construction projects all over the Western Pacific, he has also provided invaluable direction and mentorship to the Naval Construction Force during significant force reductions and organizational realignments. He was a driving force behind this staff's attention to detail on regimental programs, and he always challenged the staff to produce professional, quality, and timely products. He established a mission-focused initiative to sustain major combat operations readiness and to enhance the 30 NCR's technical competencies. He initiated bi-weekly briefs to the 7th Fleet Commander keep the warfighter informed of all the work that you guys were doing in his theater. He liaised with CTF-73 and 76 to provide an engineering reachback capability, and he improved engagement with the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Forces, with U.S. Air Force Red Horse, and with the Army's 130th Engineer Brigade. These efforts enabled subject matter experts to provide the highest quality of training and evaluation and greatly increased the Naval Construction Forces' combat readiness and ability to respond to today's emergent phase zero operations with experience and competence. As a leader and mentor, he continuously provided guidance to the leaders on his staff and to his subordinate commands. His efforts helped train them on leadership and better prepared them to face future challenges. Commodore Moore's performance and accomplishments have been nothing short of outstanding. His tenure further built the regiment's tremendous battle-proven legacy, and he has clearly changed the way Seabees will lead in future operations. Rob, I want to thank you for the amazing job you did as commander of this regiment, and I look forward to continuing to work with you as you head off to be the N3 at NECC and as you continue to advocate for the Pacific Fleet Navy Expeditionary Forces. And what does the future hold? Well, that brings us back to why an EOD guy is up here. The Navy Expeditionary Force in the Pacific is realigning itself to better advertise our capabilities and to ensure that we're maximizing our potential. The Central Command, European and AFRICOM, have all already put all their expeditionary forces under one hat in their respective AORs, and now we're doing the same thing in the Pacific Command. On 1 July, Commander Task Force 75, also the Navy Expeditionary Forces Command Pacific, stood up on Guam. As Commodore Kurgan mentioned, CTF 75's mission is to exercise operational control of Navy Expeditionary Forces, to maximize our force, to develop partnerships, and to provide command and control over the expeditionary warfare operations. I hope that doesn't sound like we're just adding a layer of bureaucracy to the chain of command because nothing could be further from the truth. Having a CTF and having the 30th Naval Construction Regiment under that CTF gives us a seat at the operational commander's table. It gives me an opportunity to daily tell the 7th Fleet Commander, his staff, and the other task forces what you, along with the other expeditionary forces in theater, are doing. And it will ultimately allow us to find new ways to work together as a Naval Expeditionary Force to achieve the commanders and even the nation's objectives in the AOR. I'm incredibly honored to be the commander that is standing up this CTF's initial operational capability, and I'm here to say how proud I am of all of you for the tremendous work that you've done under Commodore Moore and for all the great work that I know you'll continue to do under Commodore Meyer. Speaking of your new boss, while Captain Meyer does, not ha does have some big shoes to fill, he comes to you equally qualified to command the regiment. As a younger man, he was the OIC of the Cat Palau, so he's not new to the theater, and he has a record of proven leadership, including combat leadership while commanding NMCB-7 in Afghanistan. That will serve the regiment well. Gordy, I want to congratulate you on command and welcome you to the CTF-75 team. I really look forward to working with you. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a second to thank all the family members that are here with us today as well. All sailors rely on the support of their families back home when we deploy. 
and it's the families that are left behind and often have a more difficult task than the sailors that are heading downrange. Their sacrifice is noted and is very much appreciated. In closing, I just want to say that the can-do spirit of the Seabees has a long and gallant history. You Seabees today continue to uphold that legacy and you continue to be the military construction force of choice. I'm proud of you and I'm proud to be teamed up with you as we move forward. Thank you very much. God bless the Seabees and God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Maroon will now present Captain Moore an award for his service as commander of 30th Naval Construction Regiment. Please rise for presentation of award. Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain Rodney M. Moore, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptional meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as Commander, 30th Naval Construction Regiment, from June 2012 to July 2014, Captain Moore provided extraordinary foresight and superior leadership of Naval Engineering Forces to accomplish mission requirements and overcome impacts caused by sequestration. During 30th Naval Construction Regiment's deployment for Exercise Battle Catan 2013, he provided flawless command and control as the Joint Combined Military Operations Task Force Commander while simultaneously directing ongoing operational engineering missions. His keen and precise direct strengthened the regiment's operational focus and safety culture while executing deployed missions for 13 supported commanders throughout 17 countries. Captain Moore ensured his assigned units maintain readiness levels to accomplish major combat operations, theater security cooperation, humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, and phase zero requirements across the entire U.S. Pacific Command area of responsibility. Displaying exceptional vision and planning acumen, he deftly led his staff through significant force reductions and organizational realignments, ensuring a united, professional Pacific CB force. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal devotion to duty, Captain Moore reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, F.A. Morneau, Rear Admiral, United States Navy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my distinct honor to introduce Captain Rod Moore, 30th Naval Construction Regiment. Well, good morning and welcome. What a beautiful day. So this is what Port Onimi looks like. Uh, maybe I should introduce myself. I'm Amy's husband. <laughs> so Amy reminded me that I needed to slow down when I speak this morning. So that advice, coupled with the delay in the PA system, I don't think it bodes very well for me in my speech, but I'll give it a shot. So Commodores Moore, Mervyn, and, and Kurgan, thank you so much for your participation today. Congratulations to both of you on your recent assumption of command. Our force is in great hands indeed. We appreciate your steadfast vision, leadership, and I sincerely and humbly thank you for the confidence and support. Fellow commanders, commanding officers, command master chiefs, shipmates, families, friends, and guests, thank you all for joining us and making today's event such a special occasion. A warm welcome today to Gordy and his wife Tammy and their guest, Colonel Colleton, commander of the LA District for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and her husband Michael, thank you for joining us today. I should probably qualify these remarks a bit and apologize if this sounds more like a retirement, that's not my intent. Uh, to be entrusted with such tremendous responsibility and to have some of the most rewarding personal and professional experiences of my career demands some of that emotion. And I don't know if I'll have this kind of stage again in the remaining career. So to the shipmate who commented last week, man, isn't it great that we get to sit down during this change of command? It's probably indicative of the length of my speech. <laughs> there are so many folks I need to recognize today. Uh, first, uh, thanks to all those who helped support today's events. The Color Guard from NMCB-5, some of who recently made the NMCB-5 the uh, last deployment to the Asia-Pacific region. The Side Boys, the Ushers, Paracel Tawai for her beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. And special thanks to Commander Robert Alvarado, 
Lieutenant Eric Poonsalon, and Mr. Jeffrey Pinkerton for your tireless efforts, for your attention to detail to make this such a memorable occasion for me and my family. To our dear friends, the Sassix, and it looks like you brought Denny with you today. Uh, <laughs> Nicole's husband, Dave, was once my boss years ago, and it was great to be back here in Port Wanimi with the Sassix. You know, I think our dogs had more visitors than Amy and I did, and most of that traffic was the Sassick family coming to visit. Hey, did you guys get that puppy yet? No. <laughs> Bob and Judy Quinn, thanks for joining us. Bob remains a pillar in the CBE and CEC community and does phenomenal work keeping us engaged with the local community and government officials. Good to see you again, Bob. Uh, former Commodore Kelly Schmader, one of the rich lineage of 30 NCR commanders, uh, good to see you again, sir, and I recognize I'm probably not the first ever JIP motive commander, uh, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, to Captain Tom Long, good to see you, shipmate. Uh, it's great building such relationships with you and the rest of the 7th Fleet staff as we set the conditions for the transition and the integration of expeditionary forces under Task Force 75. Congratulations on your recent assumption of command, and welcome to Fort Wayne. To Amy's colleagues at XWIC and NFI, uh, thank you all for coming out to support her today. I know she's excited and very appreciative of your attendance today. And she shared with me just how gratifying it was for her to serve uh, with the XWIC team uh, during the past two years. So thank you for taking care of her while I was away. And I see several shipmates from uh, my previous times in Wanini, some of which are my regimental battle buddies from 2006-2008, uh, Scott Raymond Ray, Trace Meek, Master Chief Arnold, Mike Lukic, and many, many others to include uh, the very dedicated civilian staff at 30 NCR with Nick Cozen, uh, Steve Griswold, uh, Dan, I'll probably forget everybody, so I just appreciate you all being here today. And I think there's probably some folks from way back, like Dave Lou and Milt Washington, so thanks for all, for all showing up today. It's great to see you. Well, Amy likes to live vicariously through the lives of the uh, rich and famous down in Malibu. And just like them, I too have a dream team to take care of me. Beyond my magnificent command triad and family, I have a dream team. And I pride myself in being pretty independent, but uh, the circumstances and responsibilities necessitated that I lean on a few key and trusted individuals to keep me on top of my game. <coughs> Three of these professionals helped me sustain the uh, crazy op tempo me and the Master Chief kept, and they enabled me to stay in shape and stay laser focused on the mission. I could not have led this regiment with their, without their unqualified and superb support. I would like to sincerely thank uh, Dr. Mark Harney, Dr. Victor Lynn, and Mr. Jeffrey Pinkerton, the three great Americans who I have the utmost respect. Uh, Dr. Lynn, I don't know if he showed up today. Is Dr. Lynn out there? So Dr. Lynn works over here at the clinic, and he kept me together physically as I worked through some injuries, old age, and the rigors of literally hundreds of thousands of air miles. Uh, so he has given so much in his service. He's a Purple Heart recipient, and he takes exceptional care of our families and our CBs. So I uh, certainly thank Doc Lynn for his service and for taking such good care of our community. When I arrived here two years ago, I wasn't nearly as resilient as I needed to be, I don't think. I just returned from a 12-month individual augment tour in Iraq, where I left the, left the wire countless times, I endured the IED attack in the, the numerous endless uh, kind of rocket barrages, had shipmates uh, either injured or paid the ultimate sacrifice. Experience is not unlike uh, what many of you have endured over the last decade. As I came back, I was certainly having trouble adjusting. Doc Carney, Doc Mark Carney, who works here at the clinic, uh, he was there to put me back together emotionally and, and mentally. He's been helping our corpsmen in, in the local community, as well as our CBs, recover and adjust from the last decade of combat. And I desperately needed his help when I showed up here. As I've learned, we do a great job preparing ourselves to endure combat and all the operational stresses. I also learned that we don't do a very good job of how to unwire ourselves when we do return. And how do we cope with living back at home again and working and going through all that after all those, uh, those experiences in combat. So I knew Doc was awesome. I've worked with him in my previous capacity as Chief Staff Officer for 30 NCR. But down the receiving end of his care, I'm forever, great, forever grateful for what he has done to help, through, help me through one of the most challenges, one of the, one of the biggest challenges of my life. Uh, so thank you, Doc, uh, for all you do to take care of us and certainly for what you've done for me. 
Mr. Jeffrey Pinkerton, Mr. P as we like to call him, well, what an incredibly talented and dedicated professional you are, Jeff. And you single-handedly set the conditions for me to achieve success on such an ambitious engagement plan this last two years. Most here can't even begin to understand the detailed effort and coordination you undertook every day, day in and day out, to keep me and the Command Master Chief on the road as well as keeping the front office churning. We had countless trans-Pacific trips, time zone changes, battle rhythm events, key leader engagements, and the endless list of supportive tasks. We needed to be, you always got us where we needed to be. You never failed to deliver and got us where we needed to be, when we needed to be there, and with whom we needed to meet. So I truly admire your professionalism and determination. Thank you for taking such personal pride and ownership in what you do for us. And now to my family. Thank you to Amy's cousin Joan and her family for coming up. It's finally great to, uh, to meet you, and I look forward to uh, getting to know you better. My parents, Bob and Marsha, are here. I am so grateful to have what I think are the world's greatest parents. They recently celebrated their 57th anniversary, and we're so happy that they could be here today. So, uh, a very special day in here. To my beautiful wife, Amy. Thanks for breaking the ice there, Amy. I appreciate that. Uh, to my beautiful wife, Amy, and our daughter, daughter Kelsey, who's back at Virginia Tech right now, thank you for taking the risk leaving behind the only house the two of you have known together as home, saying farewell to lifelong friends and family and joining me on this adventure. I'm looking forward to our next adventure in Virginia Beach. Uh, I love and thank you, thank you, and I uh, can't express enough uh, what your unqualified support and love meant to me in this tour. I certainly couldn't have done it without you, Amy, and I hope you, you enjoyed the experience as much as I did. Uh, so here's a small token of my appreciation, but you can't open it until later, okay? Keep an eye on her dad, make sure she doesn't open it. Okay, to the wardroom, the chief's mess, the CBs, active and reserve, and the tremendously dedicated civilians of 30 NCR and NCG1, I'm so honored and humbled to have served with you. You inspire and motivate me day in and day out. This award represents the unit in your accomplishments. This is not an individual award. I'm in awe of your steady and quiet professionalism your unshakable dedication and your mission focus. You are compassionate warriors who continue to enhance this battle-proven regiment's rich history and legacy. I recognize the extraordinary and dynamic organizational changes all around us the past couple years, such as the establishment of Navy Expeditionary Combat Command in the Pacific, the disestablishment of First Naval Construction Division, First Naval Construction Division, the establishment of Naval Construction Group 1, CB4 structure reductions, and sequestration impacts. And through it all, you remain laser focused on the mission, on our supported commanders, and on our units. And now with the alignment to 7th Fleet and Task Force 75, you are once again leading the way, and our new supported commander will lean on you for your regional and operational experience and expertise, your situational understanding, and your relationships to continue delivering such powerful and meaningful effects across the region. From Tonga and Timor-Leste to the Philippines and Cambodia, from Japan and Korea and throughout Oceania, you are shaping developing nations, you are building relationships and engineering capacity, all in order to promote regional stability and security and to demonstrate U.S. commitment. The challenges abound and you carry the burden of this mission's responsibility with pride and perseverance. I have submitted for the last two years that the operational alignment to 7th Fleet will be and is the most significant and meaningful of all those organizational changes that have occurred in the last two years. I'm deeply honored to have served with you and I'm immensely proud of you, so I sincerely and humbly thank you and your families for your selfless service and your countless sacrifices. 
Captain Meyer is the right leader at the right time, and I look forward to seeing all the great work 30 NCR will continue to do for our Navy and combat or Navy and Marine Corps combat team. I was so fortunate to have served with an incredible command element. Command Master Chief Butch Cassell is, an, is a supremely gifted leader who took such great care of me. He took care of me, the mess, and our CBs. And he also added really great entertainment value on those long Asia Pacific trips as I got to interpret his slow southern drawl for countless airline, hotel, and restaurant customer service reps. Master Chief, I can't express my appreciation enough for your insightful and valuable counsel, your unbelievable support, your loyalty, and your trust. Good luck, shipmate. It's been a true pleasure and honor serving with you. And to my steady Chief Staff Officer, Commander Robert Alvarado, what a tremendous pleasure to serve with you, shipmate. You are a gifted and selfless leader, and I regret we didn't get a full tour together, but your exceptional performance and your insightful perspective have underpinned this regiment's success. I am deeply grateful for your wisdom, your steadfast perseverance, and your professionalism. Amy and I wish you, Carol, and the family the very, very best. Chris, I guess that would be Chris Kurgan, we are so fortunate to have your vision and your steady leadership at the helm here, and it's so, so exciting to see you in command. Continue best wishes to you, shipmate. Chris Merwin, thank you again for making the trip from Guam. I'm so excited with the stand-up of your Task Force 75. I know the leaders of the pack here stand ready to make your task force a success. They are ready to fight tonight, if required, or to execute any mission you can give them. And I'm confident this team will make you and the 7th Fleet Commander proud. Gordy, you have a very special team here, assigned with an incredibly rewarding and meaningful mission set. They will knock it out of the park for you. I wish you the very best of luck. Enjoy the great run. Well, I know that since the moment I gave Amy that gift, she's totally lost her focus, hasn't heard a word I said, so I guess I need to wrap this up. Uh, Thank you all, and thank you for your service to the nation. Have a great CB day, and God bless America. I will now read my order. Beeper's order number 2733. When directed by reporting senior, detached from 30th Naval Construction Regiment, and report not later than August 2014, to Navy Expeditionary Combat Command. Captain Meyer, I'm ready to be relieved. I will now read my orders from the Chief of Naval Personnel, subject UPERS Orders 0594. When directed by reporting senior, detached from Naval Construction Battalion Center, Gulfport, report to 30th Naval Construction Regiment for duty no later than July 2014. Captain Moore, I am ready to relieve you. Ladies and gentlemen, Grand Master Chief Curtis Cassell will now deliver the regimental colors to Captain Moore. The transfer of the 30th Naval Construction Regiment organizational colors from Captain Moore to Captain Merwin symbolizes the passing of the command to the new commander. Throughout history, military units have carried distinctive organizational colors representative of their pride and accomplishment. These colors were prominently displayed in the times of peace and at the forefront of unit battle lines in times of war. History records many epic struggles in which brave men and women fought tenaciously to the death to keep their colors flying.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the commander of 30th Naval Construction Regiment, Captain Gordy Meyer. Thank you. Commander Merwin, thank you for being here today. Your presence clearly demonstrates and highlights 30th NCR's expeditionary support and commitment to you and your command. I look forward to working for you and meeting your requirements in 7th Fleet. Commodore Kurgan, thank you for hosting today as well as for your patience and help this past week. I truly look forward to loyally supporting you as your deputy and working issues to make the NCF even better than it is today. Tammy and I are excited to get settled and spend some time with you, Kathleen, and your family. Colonel Colleton and Mike, it's great to be back in California together again. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot. As I know you have a busy command, and both of you have demanding schedules as well. Captain Moore, thank you for an absolutely superb turnover. I know I have big shoes to fill, and I have tried to absorb as much of your knowledge as possible over the past week. I feel very fortunate to be inheriting the 30th from you. I sincerely want to thank you and Amy for welcoming and helping Tammy and I in our move. I don't think it is possible to have made our transition easier. To the fellow captains, commanding officers, command master chiefs, and distinguished guests and leaders here today, thank you again for attending. I look forward to working with you, and Tammy and I are looking forward to being an integral part of the community. I need to thank my wife, Tammy, for her eternal support to me in my career. Tammy, your unconditional love means more to me than you can know. CSL Alvarado, thank you for your help this past week with my transition. I know it's been a busy turnover for you, and I truly do appreciate everything you have done. Also, thank you to everyone who helped make the ceremony today. I know it's not an easy uh, ceremony to put together, and thank you for all your time and help in making this a great ceremony. For the personnel of 30th, 30th NCR, I'm extremely excited and honored to be your new commander. I look forward to working with you to make the 30th NCR even better while meeting our mission requirements. The 30th has an impressive history and I'm eager to work with you to build upon, even further upon the many successes the regiment has achieved on the strong leadership of Captain Moore. I want to briefly share just three key pri priorities I'll be committed to. First and foremost, safely accomplishing our mission now and into the future. A CB heritage, professionalism, and positive can-do spirit are cornerstones of our success. Secondly, taking care of and supporting our personnel, and this includes our families. As your new commander, uh, you have my steadfast dedication and commitment to you. Thirdly, maintaining the highest standards of character and integrity in everything we do. Our regiment has an exciting and challenging future ahead of us with many opportunities. Our operational requirements will remain high and we must remain flexible and agile as we move forward. I'm impressed with your skills and capabilities. I have no doubt you'll continue to succeed spectacular. I could not be happier and prouder to believe in such an amazing organization such as the 30th MCR. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and the departure of the official party. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for today's ceremony and all the leadership that made this event such a success. Lastly, we thank you for our family and our freedoms, and the men and women of the 30th Naval Construction Regiment protect them both. In your holy name, amen. Commander, Task Force 75, departing. Naval Construction Group 1, departing. Captain, 
Civil Engineer Corps, United States Navy, departing. Naval Construction Regiment, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You are cordially invited to attend the reception at Duke's Place, right across the street. Thank you.